Greetings, my esteemed subscribing tons. Welcome to the great Q&A of eternal wisdom. Let's get into the questions at hand. Dear the Golden One, I'm looking to start learning a martial art, but I'm not sure where to start. Do you have any recommendations for a beginner? Thank you for all that you do and congratulations on 100k. Sincerely, Alex. Yes, I get this question quite often and it uh, warms my heart. It's a good question. I definitely endorse everyone who wants to start training a martial art. But it's really quite simple. Just go to your local club or the nearest possible club. Say to them, I am a beginner. Do you have any good classes for me to join? Usually all clubs have beginner classes, then more advanced, then competition group, etc. And you can just go into the beginners group, say, hello, here I am, I'm completely new, so be be nice to me and teach me. Uh, otherwise, you can just take some private lessons first, but um, generally speaking, it's really a really simple process. You can just go in, say, I'm new and I want to start, and they will sort you out. Next question, also a training-related one from Peter. For someone moving to more and heavier compound based training how do you suggest dividing them over a week i used to do mainly squat weighted pull-ups and bench with some dumbbell twice a week now i'm adding deadlifts and military press too much for one day i also do taekwondo twice a week looking forward to your response yes i would definitely suggest that you do bench press together with deadlift and military press together with squats and I would put the squat session before the deadlift session because if you have done heavy deadlifts your lower back might be too tired to perform the squats whereas the squats do not have a similarly taxing effect on the lower back even though it taxes it a bit but anyway I would suggest doing bench and deadlift twice a week twice a week squats and military press twice a week and then taekwondo twice a week so a lot of training you will probably have to up your calories but uh, that is my best recommendation next question from tony mirak greetings golden one have you ever read the witcher book series if you have i'm curious to know what you think of them and the absolute blasphemy that is the netflix adaptation funny you should ask i actually have three books three first books here so um Blood of Elves, aesthetic cover. We have Time of Contempt, also aesthetic cover. And The Last Wish. And yes, also, also this one has an aesthetic cover. I haven't read them yet, though, because I have quite a few books to read before I get into these. But I do believe I will read them over Christmas, because I think that might be a cozy Christmas feel to read these uh, books and uh, I will try to read them before I make the let's plays on the Witcher now that I've hit a hundred thousand I can finally do it but yeah I will get back to you on um, how I find the books in regards to the Netflix adaptation it's not something I will watch I will only get uh, disappointed and I don't have a Netflix account so I can't really comment about it but yeah, I mean, no one should have any high expectations for Netflix to make a, a cool series. So, um, yeah, that's um, that's how it is. Now we have a special question I got a while back via the private messages function. And it's a bit of... Um, yeah, uh, before I begin to answer the question for any for everyone who's watching this, this is a guy coming to me for advice, so that just uh, this is just my advice. Take it for what it is. So here's the question. Good evening. I am a homosexual young man that has lived the destructive gay lifestyle. A lot of sex with strangers, porn, and a generally sleazy behavior. I'm now out of that lifestyle and want to grow as a man. So my question is, do you have any advice for specifically homosexual men? Since we can't build a family like a straight man, it is easy to see one's own existence as meaningless, which maybe is the reason many of us fall into an immoral lifestyle. So a second, more specific question. What contributions to society can a homosexual man make? So yes, a tough question. I, as a straight man, 
perhaps it's not the best to answer this question, but since you come to me for advice, I'm just gonna give my take on it anyway. So first and foremost, good thing that you have gone away from that lifestyle. I can't imagine it to be a happy and fulfilling lifestyle to have a lot of degenerate promiscuous sex. And I say this even more for straight people. I don't endorse any sort of promiscuity. I can't see it being... I can't see anything good coming out of living a promiscuous lifestyle. And this includes uh, gay people. So if you're gay, yeah, I don't I don't endorse promiscuous sex even for you. And uh, if you are in a position where you have lived that lifestyle, yeah, it's absolutely saluted if you can tell others to not go down the same road. Because if you know it's bad for you, you can tell others. So uh, yeah, that's actually one contribution you can make specifically as a homosexual man to tell others to not live a certain lifestyle because it's obviously celebrated in today's degenerate society. Then to answer your second question in regards to finding meaning for a man and this is true for a tiny minority of women as well you don't need to have a family to contribute to society. After all as a man you have the biological function of being expendable. So if you don't create a family, you can still contribute to society in positive ways. So if we look upon inventors, etc., who have not had a family, Nikola Tesla, for example, he didn't have a family. He could concentrate solely on his particular endeavor. So if you can find a particular endeavor, be it scientific or artistic or whatever it might be, view it as well a blessing in disguise of sorts that you can focus fully on that instead of taking time to create a family. Now of course the optimal would be to have a family but if that's not possible yeah then you have extra time to concentrate fully on your endeavor and then in regards to the sex part just cut it out from your life completely. Focus on the higher instead. Focus on your path of excellence if you can find it. So that would be my best recommendation. Now of course this isn't specifically to homosexuals. This can apply to a man who for some reason do not want to engage with women or who can't engage with women. So keep that in mind. Your only contribution to society is not by having children. There are plenty of other ways you can contribute to society. You just have to find your, your own way to do it. So for any man who does not have a family, do not despair. You are still playing a part in um, saving our great civilization. Next question from Adeptus Custodes. And for those of you who don't know what a, an Adeptus Custodes is, it's an elite bodyguard for the emperor of mankind from Horus Heresy and uh, Warhammer 40k. So they are similar to the Space Marines, but um, but a bit better um, and a bit more individualistic. They are the guardians of the palace. So anyway, the question goes as follows. Hail friend, what are your opinions on property ownership and entrepreneurship? I see them as goals which we should endeavor to maximize amongst our people. Yes, I completely agree. If I were put in charge of Sweden tomorrow and could formulate any economic policy as I wanted, I would make it as simple and straightforward as possible for small companies, family businesses, entrepreneurs to get started. That's the absolutely most important thing I would say to get a thriving economy, that you can have small local businesses instead of the current crony capitalist system where you have massive corporations who are influencing legislation so that they can impose certain regulations that only they can afford to implement. So if we're talking about regulations, yeah, they're usually mostly striking against small companies because the larger companies can afford to circumvent them. So anyway, as I've said before, I am a firm believer in supporting your local economy, buying local, supporting small companies, supporting family-owned businesses, uh, instead of going for the larger ones, because there is such a thing called economics of scale, which is important. I might make a separate video on it. It simply means that the more you can buy, 
the larger quantity of a certain thing you can produce or import, the cheaper each product is. So that is why Nike or Adidas, not only do they have you know, all their factories in third world countries where they pay ridiculously low amounts of money to their workers, they also have the economics of scale advantage, which means that they can produce on such gigantic scale that each piece, each product costs much less than if you produce less. So yeah, that being said, if I were put in charge of the economics of Sweden, I would do everything in my power to make it easier for entrepreneurs, smaller companies, local companies, etc. to have an easy time. Next question, another training question from Thomas. I have a deadlift question. I see you always bend your neck to look up as you start your lifts, whereas I always thought this was bad for your spine to do this. P.S. Thanks for the glorious training videos. You've inspired me to hit a new deadlift PR of 105 kg. First and foremost, congratulations on your new deadlifting PR. Always nice to hear. So my mental cue for keeping a good spine when I do deadlifts is to simply pick a spot on the wall or in the mirror and focus on that the entire time. So the gaze is at one spot during the entire lift. That is my uh, mental cue. Next question from Brad. Is it possible to be Christian and pagan at the same time? No, I wouldn't really say so. Then of course you can take my more secular stance on it where I don't really care about the religions per se. I more view it in a cultural sense. So you can use cultural expressions from both time periods. So a Templar, but you can also promote the aesthetics of, um, of a pagan chieftain or something like that. So if you look at the cultural side of things, yeah, sure, it can work, but if you look at the spiritual, no, they're quite in, in contrast to each other. So in spiritual terms, no, in cultural terms, yes, but in cultural terms, I would say it's more of a European thing. From Grandmaster Mike, what are your two favorite Nogi submissions? Well, if I will recommend something for to learn for um, predicaments on the street, I probably would say guillotine and rear naked choke. For rolling, etc., I would choose a um, an Americana and a triangle. I like those. Next question from my man Robert Green. Dear Glorious Lion, how do you overcome on the days you wake up and are lacking motivation? Um, I really don't have those sort of days often, but if you do, I would suggest looking at your sleep patterns. I will make a separate sleep video later on, but in regards to lacking motivation, it's simply a matter of doing it. Discipline beats motivation, so if you get into a good routine, you will just do it whether you have motivation or not. Some days, if we're talking about training, you have more motivation. That's great, but you can't rely on motivation to get the job done. So uh, yeah, perhaps not much of an answer, but uh, some insights at least. Moving over to subscribe star, we have Joe asks, the golden one, you're undeniably juicy. For the average man, wouldn't a smaller endurance-based physique be more practical given the uncertain nature of our time? No, I would not say so. Your goal, as far as I see it, it should be to, if you walk down the street, you should be safer, you should be a more imposing you should be more of an imposing individual so that you can better protect your loved ones and yourself and just random people on the street. Imagine if a an old woman gets robbed next to you, you will probably want to be able to punch as hard as possible with your right cross or your left hook. Same thing if you see a woman being sexually harassed on the street, if you want to step in, you want to do it as effectively as possible. So then strength training being you know, uh, a bit more muscular and having good martial skills are the best options. So it's not about having a good endurance primarily. Then of course that is good, but but we're not in that sort of scenario. We are in Gotham City, it's on many streets, it's generally quite uh, unsafe, but yeah, you should have the physique and the abilities of a street fighter more than a soldier. Uh, the soldier part might come later, I don't know, but as it is right now, I simply want all guys to be imposing so that they can stay out of trouble, or if trouble should come to you, that you should be able to deal with it in the best possible way. 
So if you look upon, um, in Sweden's case, for example, when are old women being attacked by certain men? Yes, when there are no real men around. Uh, if there are real men around who look imposing, who look confident, yeah, they will not start any trouble. That's usually the case. Same thing, when do women get sexually harassed? Yeah, when there are no um, imposing men nearby. So that is the goal at this moment in time. Then, of course, also when we're talking about the metapolitical and the culture war, if we're talking about posting physique, we need to look good. We need to look healthy and fit and aesthetically pleasing so that we can win, so that our ideas can win the culture war. So gym and martial arts is the way forward. Last question from Patrick. What are your thoughts on firearms and general weapons access and training, not only in Sweden or Vineland, but across the West since our people are massively outnumbered? Yeah, definitely. I uh, I encourage all weapon training. If you can access it, train with, um, yeah, the more the merrier. So train with guns, train with knives, train with everything, basically. It, uh, it never hurts. It's always a good idea. And yeah, of course, within what the law says you can do. So I'm not encouraging everyone anyone to do anything illegal here. But uh, to answer the question, should you train with weapons? Yes, definitely. Why not? Um, if for no other reason, it's, um, it's fun. So yeah, those were the majority of questions at least. And uh, thank you so much everyone for your continued support. It, um, yeah, it enables me to make these videos. So thank you for that. Have a glorious weekend ahead. XXO. Boom.